extended warranties, back or cap. Not this type of cap, I'm talking about the sling that means lie. Basically another word for lying. It can be used like no cap or you can say stop capping. Yes, there's a lot of strong opinions on extended warranties. Do you get them? Do you not get them? Are they a scam? Are they a lie? Or are they just a profit center for the dealership and nobody cares about you once you leave the dealership? I put a post up on social media strictly to get information what you thought about extended warranties for this video. This comment was the best comment because there's so many people out there with negative thoughts and negative processes on extended warranties that they may not be right. And where that stems from is these morons calling you trying to sell you an extended warranty. Hello, it's Mike. We've been trying to reach you concerning your car's extended warranty. <laughs> oh my God. Well, like, like how perfect is that, that that just happened? These morons are selling you trash and they're giving extended warranties all across the country a bad name. <laughs> So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what an extended warranty is, what it covers, and the two types of extended warranties that are only available. With over 21 and a half years of experience inside of a car dealership and still employed at a car dealership today, I'm the only person qualified in the world to give you a non-biased opinion on extended warranties. Now, there are two types of extended warranties. And I know you're gonna be like, Mike, two types. No way, I've heard of all these types of warranties. There are only two types of extended warranties. There is what's called an exclusionary warranty, and there's one called stated coverage. That's it, there's nothing more out there. Exclusionary warranty is typically sold on new cars or cars still under some sort of factory warranty. That could be the bumper to bumper warranty, which we're gonna talk about bumper to bumper here. And some warranty companies will allow you to be under powertrain warranty to give you this exclusionary warranty. Exclusionary warranties are the best and they're the easiest ones to explain. Exclusionary warranties are exactly that. They're exclusionary. They will tell you what is not covered. Yes, what is not covered, which is very rare out there to find on warranties, insurance, and stuff like that. So this box right here is a prime example of the extended warranty that I sell at my dealership. Right there is the box and it says what is not covered. If it is not listed, then it's covered. Now exclusionary warranty is the technical term of the contract, but they may be called something different on the dealership level. The most common one would be new car coverage. That's very, very common that I see across the industry is this being called new car coverage. But again, it's exclusionary because they tell you what is not covered. But Mike, What's the second one? Well, that would be what's called stated coverage. And stated coverage could be a numerous names on the dealership level. Used car coverage, powertrain coverage, which used car coverage is gonna tell you exactly what is covered on it. And there are a few different types of used car coverages. I'm not a big fan of these used car coverages saying they're gonna cover this, 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 electrical, you know, air conditioner. My dealership, we have the exclusionary warranty and we have this used car stated warranty. There's no in between and there's no lesser ones outside of the powertrain warranty, which is exactly that. It covers engine, transmission, final drive assembly, and they can vary from dealership to dealership. And those lifetime warranties that we see and hear all about, yes, that is a stated coverage as well. They're junk. Number one, you'll never make a claim on them. And if you try to make a claim on them, they're probably gonna deny you. And then the biggest one, I know you're like, Mike, what about certified pre-owned? What about certified pre-owned? Certified pre-owned is a stated coverage. A big misnomer that most car salespeople say when they have a certified pre-owned warranty is they say bumper to bumper. Bumper to bumper is a made up term from the dealership. If you go look at a brand new 2021 car right now, there's nowhere the manufacturer says bumper to bumper on the window sticker, on their warranty guide, nowhere. It says limited warranty, which limited warranty means there is things they're not going to cover. On a brand new car, you may have a 12 month, 12,000 brake warranty that your brakes are only covered for 12 months, 12,000. Glass, squeaks, rattles. They're not gonna cover that for the full warranty of the new car. <sighs> well. Mrs. Chevy dude said I was ranting right there. So yeah, with that, keep going. all right, well stop interrupting me and let me well, keep going. Let's, stop. let's oh, I'm done, I'm done. I could talk about this stuff all day long. Let's talk about the pros and cons to extended warranties. So I think the biggest thing with the pro 
of an extended warranty is you're locking in today's rates. So, or in some cases, maybe two or three years ago rates. So my current dealership, we have not seen a rate increase in over two years in extended warranties. And as we are here in 2021, we see the prices of lumber going up. We see the prices of cars going up. Everything in this world is going up in price. So right now, if you decide that extended warranty is right for you, you may be locking in prices from a year ago, two years ago, or just currently today. So that's a big benefit, I think, if you do decide that extended warranties are right for you. Another big pro that I love about extended warranties is you can guarantee your repair costs. You know exactly what your repair costs are going to cost you over the term of your extended warranty. If you spent $2,000, $2,500, $3,000 on a warranty, then you know over five, six, seven years, maybe some cases 10 years, that you're never going to spend another penny with the exception of maybe a small deductible when you have it. Now, there's a couple deductibles that you need to be aware of. One is a stated dollar amount that you have to pay every single time per repair order, not per item broken, but per repair order. So if you walk into the dealership and say, hey, I got this broken, this broken, this broken, and it's all in one repair order, you just pay one deductible. If you walk in three different instances and put it on three different repair orders, then you have three deductibles that you have to pay. The other one is called a reducing deductible. So a reducing deductible is a benefit to you and to the dealership. And you have a stated dollar amount deductible at every dealership in the country with the exception of the dealership you bought it from. So the benefit for the dealership is you come back to the dealership to get your repair done and the benefit to you is if you go to that dealership, you have no money out of pocket. So tell me how you can ever guarantee the repair cost on a car five years from now. I mentioned it a second ago, but you only pay a deductible per repair order. That is super nice to have, but deductibles are on most extended warranties. And I wanna tell you that you wanna make sure you do a $50 deductible or a $100 deductible. You really don't wanna do over that because if a part comes in and it's $300, that means the extended warranty company is only paying 100 and you're stuck paying 200 because that's the most common deductible. So only do 50 or $100 deductible because that's your cost out of pocket anytime that you need a repair. This is typically true for extended warranties, but with the rental car shortage and the car shortage at dealerships, you typically are guaranteed a rental forward slash loaner car. So typically speaking, again, it's 2021 and everything is crazy in this market, that if you have a covered repair and it's taking multiple days or over 24 hours in some cases, that you will be given a loaner car or rental car. Listen, we're all busy, I get it. That is something that's super nice that the dealership is gonna go to bat for you and have a relationship for you with a loaner car company like Enterprise or Avis, or they have their own loaner cars right there at the dealership that they just give you the keys and tell you to go drive. You don't have to set up the dealership, you can go run errands, you can do things for the kids, whatever the case may be, you're not stuck at the dealership waiting on that repair. If not all, very vast majority of service contracts actually have travel coverage in it. So if you're traveling somewhere and you experience a breakdown, that's covered, right? It's gotta be a covered breakdown. Then they will reimburse you usually 75 bucks a night for hotel stay and food and stuff like that. It's not a lot of money. You're not gonna get rich off of it, but it's super nice that they do compensate you just a little bit when you're traveling. Oh, but a car salesman is not gonna tell you the negatives about an extended warranty, right? Wrong. Chevy Dude is gonna tell you exactly the negatives of an extended warranty. So let's talk about those cons. And I've seriously thought long and hard about this. That's what she said. <laughs> And I've actually went out to websites and typing in cons of extended warranties because I just wanted to see if there was anything that I was missing knowing this business like the back of my hand. I typically don't have to do a whole lot of research, but just to let you know, I did look at third-party websites. The biggest one out the gate, the number one thing is you may never use it. You may waste that money. But listen, we waste money on things every single day. We stop at the gas station, homeowner's insurance, car insurance. We pray to God that we don't use homeowners and car insurance, but we spend probably more money on that per year or over five or six years than we ever will on an extended warranty. So the biggest one is that you may never use it. But in my opinion, I think that's a risk I'm willing to take because these cars are expensive, things get outdated, and they don't repair very easily. Speaking of expensive parts, 
Extended warranties can be expensive. We're gonna talk about the average price of extended warranties here in a second, but they can be expensive, especially if you're looking at like BMWs, Mercedes, you may be talking on some of these cars, and I've seen this, $10,000 for an extended warranty. At that point, I probably would never buy one, and I don't think I've ever sold one that expensive, but they can get expensive on the contract depending on the car you buy. I learned this back in 2008 and 2009, and I probably can guarantee that there's nobody out they're talking about this kind of an extended warranty and that would be going out of business most warranty companies that dealerships use are third-party companies because there is a benefit to them that we're not even going to get into but that company may go out of business and at that point that piece of paper that your extended warranty is written on is worth absolutely nothing. So you do gotta be fearful about extended warranties going out of business, but since the 08, 09 era, I don't know of any big companies going out of business, but make sure you Google the company that the dealership is representing. And obviously if it's backed by the manufacturer, you don't have much to worry about, but a third party company, you just wanna be careful, but it shouldn't be a big, huge concern. As always, there's some opinions and theories out there on new car coverage, don't buy it at the time of delivery. Other people were like, yes, buy it at the time of delivery because we do have some overlapping. If you buy a six or seven year warranty, the first three years are going to be covered by the manufacturer and not by the extended warranty company. Well, again, we're gonna talk about cost here in a second, but that's not really true because the extended warranty company knows that first three years, 36,000 miles is covered by the manufacturer. So therefore they have a lower cost because they're taken on from year three on. So my opinion, and with my 21 and a half years of experience inside of a car dealership, always buy it at the time of delivery. I told you well, up front that one of the biggest things is you're locking in today's prices. If you decide to wait for three years on a new car to get the extended warranty, then you may have a price increase and you're gonna pay more for that. Another big benefit for most people in the market is you can wrap that warranty into your car payment loan and not have to pay for it all up front. Not to mention most people, the average mileage in the country is 17,821 per year. So when you times that by two, we're just under 36,000 miles. So in two years, you're out of your three years warranty and your 36,000 miles. So in my opinion, to make sure you get this clear, buy at the time of delivery. It's the best bet. So let's talk about the cost of these extended warranty. I first wanna tell you, at the time of this recording, Bachman Chevrolet in Louisville, Kentucky is one of the top 120 Chevy dealers in the country. There's 3,000 Chevy dealers. So I have a really big sample that the average repair order cost when you walk in and you have to pay money, whip out your credit or debit card, is over $500. That takes an account for all the oil changes. So when you take those out, that dollar amount goes up even further. The average cost that I think that I see out there on an extended warranty is anywhere from $2,000 to $4,000 for your common cars. Now, BMWs, Mercedes, you're gonna see those go way up. I've seen Audis at over $10,000. Rest assured, I've never sold a $10,000 warranty, but I have sold four and $5,000 warranty for those high line cars. To kind of give you an example, since I sell a lot of Corvettes, if I sell one of my customers a 10 year, 125,000 exclusionary warranty, that cost is only $3,800. Yes, for 10 years, your budget is $380 per year. You look at a Silverado, you're probably looking in the mid 2000s, maybe upper 2000s. So let's talk about how to negotiate these warranties because it can be tricky. There's an art to the negotiation. It's very important that you understand that these service contracts, extended warranties, can be negotiated. The person in charge of selling service contracts, extended warranties, is gonna be that finance manager. And the first thing that they're going to do is bring you a piece of paper out like this one right here that has four or five different columns showing you different options that you can add on to your car loan. Also, they may have this big pad that's really fancy and they can touch it and all that stuff. But here's what they do. They don't focus on the price of the extended warranty. They only focus on one thing and that's what it'll add to your monthly payment. So you gotta watch out for a leg because we do talk about that quite a bit on this channel. And when they come out and they tell you, hey, listen, for 10 bucks more a month, you can get this service contract. That's probably where there is leg. A service contract should cost you anywhere from 30 to 40, maybe even tie in $60 more per month. 
And obviously it's much easier to budget $30, $60 more per month than write a big bill at the service department. So the very first thing that you need to do when they present their menu to you is blatantly ask this one question, what is the cost of this extended warranty? You wanna know exactly what the dollar amount is. $2,500, $3,500, $4,000, whatever the case may be, you want to know that. These are negotiable. Dealerships will have a markup anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 in their service contracts. I personally think a good fair profit is $800 on a service contract because when I purchase extended warranties, my dealership charges me $300 over cost. I think extended warranties are extremely valuable for the right person and you have to figure that out if it is beneficial to you or not.